this song, we'll be doing number 122. 122. Majesty, worship is majesty. to worship the majesty of our Lord this morning. Well, as far as announcements, it is first Sunday, so we have potluck today, and you are welcome to stay and join us for lunch. Wednesday discipleship does not meet this week, April the 5th, because our uh, county schools are on spring break. And next Sunday is Easter, so there will be a lot going on. Of course, we're going to gather for worship, but we also want to remind you that the children will meet for the entire worship hour in the Fly Kids room, and the youth are going to meet with Brother Mike for the entire hour, um, starting out in the beanbag room, I believe. <laughs> They're also going to help us hide the eggs, so if you are bringing eggs for the hunt next Sunday, please drop those off in the fellowship hall next Sunday morning. We also want to remind you about our half million mobilization, which is prayer from Easter to Pentecost. And there is a downloadable prayer journal at the website if you are interested in that. Church board meeting coming up April 16th. And if you would like to register for children's camp, all that information and link is now live at the website. Well, this morning, as we do turn our hearts to worship, I invite you to stand if you are able and we hear the word of the Lord for us this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to see you on this Palm Sunday. Remind you of those words spoken so long ago. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Let's pray together today. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are indeed thankful that we can come into your house to worship you together. For everything that is said and done here today, we ask that you would be in charge. Have your way with us. We pray your spirit would come and bless us with his presence, fill our hearts and make us able to worship you well. Be in control of everything that is said and done here and use this time, we pray, to build us up into the image and the likeness of Jesus Christ, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll turn to 124 in your hymn book, number 124.
page 283 283 There is coming a day Gracious Heavenly Father, today we ask that you would be with us. We pray that you would be with our worship. We ask, Lord, that today you would bless those who come into your house. We ask that you would receive these offerings, blessing the gift and the giver, and help us to be good stewards of what we receive to do your work in our community and beyond. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.
offering. If you'd like to turn to page 352. 352. <laughs> store so if you are three years old through sixth grade you are dismissed and being it is a beautiful day it's a good day to stand up turn around and shake somebody's hand and say good morning
This morning, as we turn our hearts toward prayer, I would ask that you be mindful and think of those who would come to mind. Um, we, um, I don't even know what to say. It's been kind of a week. Um, Many of you, all of you, are aware of what happened at the first of the week in Nashville. The lives that were lost and the tragedy that has unfolded and um, this has happened in other places and now it's happened close to home. And uh, let us keep the families that lost children and loved ones at the Covenant School in our prayers. Let us uh, be diligent to pray for all of those children who are in that school and will forever remember that day. The, uh, The aftermath of that will go on for years. And, uh, Let us pray for those families and children. Um, All those affected by the storms, in the last couple of weeks we've seen amazing destruction from tornadoes. Um, I know that our Hearts are just pulled in many directions as we have friends and loved ones and church family scattered around and close to the destruction. And we would do everything we could to care for those. This morning we continue to pray for those places where we see unrest and war and fighting for our nation's leaders, for those serving in our armed forces, for our law enforcement agents and first responders, those on our prayer list who are sick and recovering from disease. Pray for the Brady family, for Clara and uh, her brother died uh, this week, Cowboy. I mean, if you know Cowboy died and uh, his service will be this week. Pray for that family. Continue to pray for those of our number who are sick or recovering or dealing with disease. Um, Call out whoever you want to. Would you add your request? Just tell us what's going on. Yes, sir. Yes, Daryl's surgery. April's friend, Eddie's not well, Mackenzie's test and Chansey surgery tomorrow. Remember these that have been mentioned. Crystal's father's eyes. Let's remember Andy. Let's keep him in our prayers.
afraid to go to them because she doesn't like chewing on the grass. It's pretty hard on her. Okay. So. Remember Mark's new job? Farmer Pete. Pray for Roseanne. Continue to pray for Michael and the Bates family. Katie. Unspoken prayer request, you might want to indicate this morning. Let's pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, today I thank you that we can come into your house, that we can worship you, that we can Share our grieves as a community that we can hurt with those who are hurting. And so today, we pray that somehow your hand would be at work. We pray especially for the comfort of those families who lost loved ones this week. We pray for Nashville. We pray for the Covenant Community Church today. We pray for that pastor's home. We pray for those children witnessed and were traumatized by all of those events. We admit that we don't know how to pray about that and many things. But we know that you are at work somehow. And though we are convinced you never cause evil, we know that you can use it you can use it to help us to grow, to learn, to become better people. So somehow, in the midst of all of the tragedy that has happened, the loss and the trauma, we ask that you will do what only you can do, that you will bring life and strength and healing. Today we are mindful that there are needs all over our world through the middle of our nation in the wake of these storms. How we ask that you would give us wisdom to know where we can act and how we can act to do your good work in our world. We pray for the family of Cowboy Brady this morning. We just ask that you will be with them in their time of grief for those of our number who are sick and recovering. We pray for Crystal's father's eyes pray for Farmer Pete and for Mark's new job and for Roseanne and for his family and that this will be a new chapter and it will be good for them. We pray for April's friend with cancer. We pray for Daryl's upcoming surgery. We pray for Eddie to recover quickly for Mackenzie and her tests for a good outcome from Chancey's surgery tomorrow. We pray for Andy that he will have good days and you would strengthen his body. We continue to pray for Scott and for Carly and for Bailey, for Cindy and Brenda and Reddick and Dorothy and for those who serve us 
as first responders and law enforcement agents and our soldiers and sailors and airmen and Marines and Coast Guard. And for the great host of unspoken prayer requests in your sanctuary today, we pray your spirit descend upon us in Christ's name we ask. Amen. Palm Sunday, and it's good to be in the house of the Lord with the people of God. Place where we come, and a place where we welcome those who come. A place where I hope we find hope and healing. If you have your Bibles today, I ask that you would find the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 21. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 21. where we will read verses 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and they had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her, and tie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them. And he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, on the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. And they brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. And a very large crowd, one of the great understatements of Scripture, and a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When they entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. May the Lord bless the reading of his word today. Today begins Holy Week. And it's somewhat fitting that all of this talk about riding on donkeys happens Mule Day weekend, right? Today we call Palm Sunday, but before it was Palm Sunday, it was the day to select the lamb. The day to select the lamb. Very often in our observance of Holy Week, I think we sometimes, pardon the silly words, but we pass over the Passover. <laughs> I think it might be important to remember that the week that we call Holy Week has been a holy week for even longer than Christian observance. That it goes back all the way to that first Passover. Y'all all remember the first Passover, right? Well, at least you remember the movie version of it, right? 
the old Exodus movie that everybody, I hope everybody has seen at least parts of. If you're too young to have, you know, watched it once a year when it came on TV, you ought to at least, you know, learn something about ancient history and watch the Exodus. Put some visuals to this. The tenth of Nisan, the first month in the Jewish calendar, they choose the lambs, the year that Jesus was crucified, the, the year that the first Palm Sunday happened, we believe that the tenth of Nisan was Sunday, the day to select the lambs. So families who had come from far and near um, Passover was one of the pilgrim feasts for the Jewish people. Every one, uh, certainly um, male head of households, but really everyone was encouraged to try to make that pilgrimage that could. Certainly you strove to make that pilgrimage at least once in your life. Some people made it a habit to do it every year. Everybody that could go went. Does this sound like anything that happens in Murray County every year? I mean, it's just the corollaries with Mule Day are interesting. What was a pretty big city by ancient standards, Jerusalem in the first century, a city of probably 40 or 50,000 people, would swell in size, would grow to the point where it was uh, bursting at the seams. Sound familiar to anybody? Uh, depending upon exactly which source you use, the population of Jerusalem grew by 200,000 to a million people. And probably, probably the year that Jesus entered Jerusalem was a big year. And that was because the three, pil or three feasts that sometimes occur because of the way the calendar and the equinox and the Jewish calendar works. Fall, they would fall sequentially. Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Feast of, or the celebration of first fruits, the offering of first fruits. In the year that Jesus entered Jerusalem, it was one of those years. Why not get three for one? Make your pilgrimage and just stay long enough to be there for all the parties. Today was the day they selected their lamb. Some families were herders. They would have brought a lamb. Most families would not have been keepers of sheep in the first century, and they would have come to Jerusalem and they would have bought a lamb. When they bought the lamb, it wouldn't just be a lamb anymore, right? Any of you ever have that experience? You go to a car dealership and it's got cars and then suddenly you have your car. This is what happened, the selection of the lambs. They bought a lamb. Suddenly it was their lamb. And they would get this lamb on Sunday and they would keep this lamb. That day, Monday, and Tuesday, and Wednesday, and they would care for this lamb and they would keep this lamb and it would become their lamb. Don't you know that was a fun one with the kids? We got a lamb. We've got to feed this lamb. We've got to water this lamb. 
and we're going to take care of this lamb because this is a spotless lamb and it's got to be spotless come Thursday when we offer it as a sacrifice. There's some part of me there's some part of me that just says imagine imagine what it was like for a father with his children to go to Jerusalem you pack up the tent and you spend days or possibly weeks traveling and you get there with your whole family and you pitch your tents you know they didn't have Hilton hotels and if they had had them they wouldn't have had room for between 200,000 and a million people extra so there's tents everywhere there's people in makeshift accommodation as far as the eye can see. And every family gets a lamb. And every family tends a lamb for three. So you're a shepherd for three days at least. You ever bring a puppy home from the pound? How long before your kids? There's just a part of me that goes... Imagine the dads and moms. And here's the lamb. It was a lamb and now it's our lamb. How are you going to answer all of those questions come Thursday? Why, why did the lamb have to die? It's even more poignant when you understand that families went together with their lamb to the temple to offer the sacrifice. And the way that system worked, we wouldn't agree with anymore, but the way it worked is they would enter into the court of the Gentiles, they would pass into the court of the women, where all women who had the way of women who had reached a certain age would stop. And then all men, all male children, and all prepubescent female children would be allowed to enter the court of the men and approach the court of the priest leading their lamb. And it would be an ugly, horrible scene. It had to be as maybe 50,000 lambs were being slaughtered and you were in a line with your children, with your lamb. And then it came to be your turn. And all those questions. And you would have an opportunity to Tell your children the story of Egypt. Slavery and bondage and the plagues and the blood of the lamb. And the angel of death passing over. You were saved by the blood of the lamb. We get to Palm Sunday and we know all of those things. We know that Jesus is the Lamb of God, proclaimed as such by John the Baptist. We know that when Jesus presented himself to John the Baptist, John the Baptist proclaimed, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Sometimes I'm reminded of an even earlier verse. When a son, Isaac, said to his father, Abraham, 
as they're heading to Mount Moriah. Do you remember that story? And Isaac asks Abraham, where is the lamb? And Abraham answers, God will provide the lamb. We come to this day and it's filled up with Christian tradition and pageantry and depending upon your exact Christian tradition, you may have been part, there are people all over the world who did break out palm branches today and waved palm branches as part of their morning celebration. We will save those and dry them and burn them and have ashes for Ash Wednesday next year. We will repeat the story. We will retell the story. And I so often fear that when we get to this day, the, these high holy days of Holy Week, when we remember Palm Sunday and then on Monday the cleansing of the temple and tumultuous Tuesday when Jesus is being examined, questioned, challenged, and uh, in an attempt to entrap him by the temple officials, and then a quiet Wednesday, often referred to as Holy Wednesday. And then Monday, Thursday, when Jesus celebrates the Passover with his disciples and institutes after that Passover meal something new that we still celebrate when we share communion. When he took the cup and the bread and it became the body and blood that was offered for our sins once and for all. And then there's the betrayal Thursday night and the trial Friday morning and the torture and scourging and crucifixion and death and burial on Friday that we call Good Friday. And then there is silent or sad Saturday when we try to remember how those apostles and disciples of Jesus felt having had their whole world and all of their hopes shattered as they waited, not knowing what they were waiting for. And then, well, next Sunday will come and we'll talk about that. I sometimes worry that The story of Jesus, the story of Holy Week is the story of a lamb, a lamb. The story of the one who died to forgive the sins of the world, a story from long ago that's distant. This morning, this morning, for just a moment, could you think of Jesus as not a lamb, but your lamb? Maybe like those children. So long ago, who cared for that lamb, grew attached to that lamb, and felt what it was like that their lamb died so the angel of death could pass over and they could be rescued. This morning, I would challenge you to understand that while Jesus is the Savior of the world, and while he died to forgive the sins of many, he's your lamb. He died for you. When he hung on that cross, 
as his blood was poured out, as his body was broken, as he gave himself an atoning sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins, he was your lamb. The sins that he died to forgive were your sins. He was your lamb. I think until I think until you understand that Jesus is your lamb, it'll be hard for him to be your savior. He is your lamb. He wants to be your savior. had to be uncomfortable being in a house that night that first Passover wondering what the next day would bring being afraid being uncertain that tradition carried on that story got retold that father that father told his children as they stood in line waiting for their lamb to be sacrificed He told them. That it would be the lamb's blood. That would cause the angel of death to pass over them. It'd be my lamb. It'd be your lamb. Is he your lamb today? Do you know? Not only that Jesus died to save sinners, but that he died to save you. Have you accepted that truth deep in your soul? If so, if by faith you have turned to Jesus for forgiveness, if you have repented, changed your mind, chosen to go God's way and not your way, if you've confessed your sins, if you've asked Jesus to be your Savior, to forgive you, Commit yourself to walking the way Jesus walked, to following him. Then the words are quite literally true for you. That the blood of the lamb causes the angel of death to pass over. Christ has become for us our Passover lamb. May the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse you of all sin and preserve you blameless until his coming again. Words that need not only be spoken, 
when we share communion, but that need to be understood every day, and especially on the day you choose your lamb. Have you chosen your lamb? Let's pray together. Our gracious Heavenly Father, today we ask your blessing upon everything that has been said and done here. Somehow we pray. Take, use, work. Make healing and wholeness possible. Thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, who has become for us the Lamb of God. And by the breaking of his body and the shedding of his blood, we find ourselves forgiven today. How I pray that it might be true for every person under the sound of my voice, near and far. That Jesus would be my lamb. My Savior. Bless those who have come into your house this day. Meet a blessing out for each one, fit for their needs in the coming days. Dismiss us now with your blessing. Go with us through this holy week. Help us enter into the passion of our Lord. And may our hearts be prepared for the great celebration that awaits us on Easter Sunday. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. You are reminded that uh, it's first Sunday in potluck and you're welcome to stay and have lunch with us. <laughs>